I don't know. 
Put your thumb there, we'll be there in just a moment. Trying to get my bearings. It's been a couple of weeks since, since I've been in folks that got baptized and gave their lives to Christ and, and all that while I've been gone. So we're going to acknowledge them here uh, at the conclusion as well. Uh, just trying to. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. Don't have time for one more song this morning.
is always half empty. There are times where it seems like we have no digestible answers. Have you ever been there? Where you feel like I've got more worry than I've got results. Uh, but I stop by to let you know that that uh, as you struggle, as Riley struggled, that there is a remedy for your ill. Yeah. Reminded of a song by a fellow by the name of Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick penned the song as we were dealing with all kinds of social uh, uh, unrest. There were, there were young men who looked like me who were being murdered in the streets for simply driving while black. Uh, there were young men who looked like me who, who were unarmed but somehow could go to work and not find their way back home at the end of the day. We were living in a country where the commander in chief looked at us as second class individuals. We were living in, tur in turbulent times where it seemed like no matter where you turned, there were no answers. It seemed like stuff just went no ever again. No better. Right. Kendrick Lamar comes along and he picks this song as an anthem to remind everybody that this isn't the first time yeah. we've had trouble. Yeah. Here's the song to remind us that we've overcome some stuff before and we'll overcome some stuff again. He pins this song to remind us that it is not in the opposition that we put our trust, but in Jesus Christ the Lord yeah. Almighty. It is in a higher power that we trust that everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Uh, we'll have started a series today Learning to live inside out again. Okay. But I want to speak to you from the subject. We're going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to speak to somebody with, with some anxiety today. We're going to be all right. Uh, We're going to be all right. Three things that I believe the text teaches you on this morning. And the lesson will be yours. Three things. If you're the note taking type, you can go ahead and write these down in the front end. And then we'll just walk through the text this morning. And then uh, the lesson will, will be yours. First thing that the text teaches us is this. Is that you can't address it. Until you've acknowledged it. You can't address it until you first acknowledge it. Somebody if you walked in with some, some anxiety, you walked in with some worry, you walked in with some fear. First thing we've got to do is acknowledge it, that it's there. You can't address it until you've acknowledged it. The second thing that the text teaches is this: is that there's a prescription and a praise for your condition. Oh my goodness. There's a prescription and a praise for your condition. Yeah, doctors used to tell them, take two of these. Call me in the morning. Yeah, yeah. There's a prescription and a praise for your condition. The third and final thing, Sister Merlin, that the text teaches this morning is this, is that sometimes the best place to be is silent and on the sidelines. Sometimes the best place you can be is both silent and on the sidelines. The text this morning, the Bible says in verse uh, number 10, And when Pharaoh drew near to the children of Israel, they lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Drop down to verse number 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and seek the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Our text this morning brings us into proximity with God's people, Brother Leo, as they come into contact with what some could describe as an adversary or a giant, or a problem, uh, opposition, if you will. Life for them had always been easy, living in Egyptian bondage. According to Acts chapter, excuse me, according to Exodus uh, chapter 12, they had been in bondage for nearly 430 years. The implication of the text is that this is not just a personal issue, but rather a generational issue. For generation after generation, this problem seemed to exist. Yeah. I wish I had some folks here this morning who could recognize the generational problem that you see. Yeah. Yeah. However, the text shows us that this was not only a shared external generational issue that they were dealing with, but we're going to soon find out, Bill, that they have a greater battle happening internally yeah. with their own anxiety. Yeah. 
set the stage contextually. You need to know that in chapter 12, Pharaoh has finally agreed to let God's people go. They're all set to leave Egyptian bondage and everybody's excited. They're packing up and they're looking forward to life in the land of milk and honey. But when we get down to chapter number 14, Pharaoh has had a change of heart. He's decided that he's not going to let them go. In fact, he's going to go after them. At the same time, as the children of Israel are beginning to struggle with what's coming behind them, the text tells us, uh, Brother Ricky, that they now are struggling with what's in front of them. And the Bible says uh, that after uh, Pharaoh decided he was going to come after them, uh, they had problems in front of them. As they're running away from Pharaoh, they come up close and personal with the Red Sea. They've got to uh, the Red Sea and now anxiety is beginning to flare up yet again. You know how it is when you feel like I just solved the problem and here comes another one. You ever been there when you feel like I just got everything to make sense and then here comes something else throwing the whole equation. I just got these bills to balance and here comes this Where God has called me to lead you, yeah. but I need you to do something. 
something with your anxiety. Yeah. 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 He says, I, I need you to understand that we can't go no further. We, we, we can't do nothing else. We, we, this journey just won't work if you can't deal with your pre-existing fears first. Oh, the part in the text that makes me want to shout, Chad, is that he tells them uh, not just to not be afraid, but Charles, he, he's telling them, uh, I don't want you to be afraid, not just for the sake of getting over some stuff. But he's telling them, I don't want you to be afraid because if you are afraid, you're going to miss the blessing that God has for you. You, you just missed it. Okay. I, I'm telling you to deal with your anxiety, not just because I think something's wrong with you. I'm telling you that if you don't get your mind right, then your eyes won't be right, then your heart won't be right, then your hands will never be right. I need you to do something with your perspective of your pain, something with the perspective of your anxiety. Oh, church, some of too many of us have moved without dealing with our unresolved anxiety. And then God has blessed us, and we don't even know how to enjoy it. God has blessed some of us with some stuff, and we don't even know how to enjoy it. Because we're still, listen, that's, that's, I'm not going to look at nobody, but I'm because I don't know y'all's sister. There's a brother here right now who's been blessed with a real good woman in his life, but you can't love the woman that God has given you the way she needs to be loved because you still be talking about the last woman you want to Oh, there's a sister here, Chad, that God has blessed with a good God-fearing man, and you can't love that good God-fearing man the way he needs to be loved because he's still working about some stuff that the last man did to you that he So you can enjoy your blessing. Tell them, don't be, don't be afraid. Oh, church, listen, I know they felt alone. They probably felt just, you know, all worried. And, and because sometimes anxiety will take you to some dark places. Oh, but I stop by to let you know that if you stay in a dark place long enough, you'll find some light. Light only exists where darkness was. You just missed that. So he says to them, don't be afraid. I know it must have been rough. It had to be difficult to know that there was a problem behind you and a problem in front of you. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is, sometimes following God is hard. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They were in a place that was uncomfortable for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, sir, God has to. Sometimes God has to strip us yeah. in order to save us. Yeah. Um, Sometimes he's got to take everybody yeah. and everything from around him yeah. uh, to, to, to get us to fully and completely rely yeah. on him. Yeah. Oh, I know they got all the way yeah. to that Red Sea and they got frustrated. I, mean, I know they got there and they saw that Red Sea in front of them. And they said, I'm going to run from this joker and we done finally made it out here. And I know Moses had to know the sea. And so before we got to, I can't believe. Yeah. We hear that this red sea, and I'm all worried because if the thing in front of me don't kill me, then the thing behind me don't kill me. I couldn't stand in there and leave the die with some dignity. Frustration will do some yeah. stuff to yeah. yeah. You need to know, church, the frustration will either make you quit yeah. or it'll make you become creative. Yeah. When you get frustrated, either you're going to wash your hands or you're going to pull up your pants. that they were going to keep going and follow God. You need to understand yeah. that he yeah. knew that although they were afraid that God had something better. I, I know y'all just had Bible class this morning, ladies. Yeah. Like had a, that nevertheless was on the way. They had to go through this so they could get to that. Yeah. You need to understand uh, that, that anxiety and fear are not the same thing, but they are the same thing in a different and extended manner. There is a direct correlation between fear and anxiety. Amen. Thank you. Matter of fact, anxiety often manifests itself as fear. Amen. Fear is, is, is concern. Uh, it, it, it's a core emotion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's a rapid response to an immediate threat. Yeah. Right? You're right. You're right. Anxiety is a continuous behavior pattern yeah. as a result of that fear. Amen. Give you an example. Somebody walked in and, 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 and they pulled out a snake and Rodney, Rodney jumped. That's fear. Yeah. Right. But Rodney refusing to go to the zoo yeah, yeah. It's anxiety. That's 
Come on now. Come on. Your fear sometimes is justified. Yeah, yeah. But your anxiety says something about your spirit. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Your fear is your natural humanistic response to something you weren't prepared for. Yes, yes. Your anxiety says, I had that experience, but I don't trust God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. my next experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anxiety literally right. is almost like fear of fear. Amen. Yes. I don't ever want to be afraid of being so anxious. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yes. You know, there's somebody right now who is walking away from you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because they don't want to open themselves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's somebody, and I don't know, there's somebody who shows up every Sunday. Yeah. Who is missing the love of an amazingly warm and, and, and friendly congregation and a loving congregation yeah. and, 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 and I've, I've, been, I've, been a, I've been doing a whole lot. Yeah. I've been a whole lot of places. Yeah. One of the best congregations in this country yeah. as it relates to the friendliness and the people yeah. and the environment. And you know what you're missing it because somebody hurt your feelings a long time ago and you don't want to be ever hurt again so now you uh, not trusting in God that the next person comes along will hurt you. Not the last one. If you move from fear to anxiety. He says, I need to do something with it. We can't move. We can't move. We can't move. They were, they, they, they were jacked up. And you would be too if you had been enslaved. And then when you finally think it's over. Oh, then you, you realize it might not be over. Right. You, ever, you ever escaped something? Or thought you would escape something? You only realized you did escape something? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, some of y'all be doing that at work. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk to Miss Green today. I'm going to go on the side door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to Miss Green. She be tripping around my brains. <laughs> I go on the side door. And I come in, and lo and behold, somebody was in the, in the bathroom by the front door, so Miss Green is coming out the bathroom by the side door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh, right? Don't worry. That's why we thought we'd escaped it, but we, we, we really, we really did. They thought they'd gotten away, but they weren't quite sure. If, if they think you need to understand each side, the old folk and young folk alike struggle with anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. There's some young folks sitting here this morning. Who are struggling to do well in the class. Because you can't get past the last test you failed. There are some young people here this morning who are struggling to reach your full potential because the last person told you they didn't think you could. Yes. There's a young person here right now struggling to love the parent that stayed because of the way the parent that left treated you. Old folk. We have anxiety too. Yeah, yeah. And because the last time we stepped out on faith, it didn't go the way I thought it would. Yeah. I prayed that God would do something and he didn't do it the way I thought. Amen. He was going to do it. I, I get all that. But yeah. Moses is saying to them, before we do anything, mm -hmm. I need you to get over some stuff. Amen. Yeah. So it's told them in the text, verse number 13, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the Not only do you need to be able to acknowledge it so you can address it. Yeah. After you've done that, you need to know that there's a prescription and a praise yeah. for your prescription. Doctor, and you know something wrong? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can tell you I don't really see nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank it's frustrating to know that something is wrong, but you don't have a fix for it. Right. You need to know that if you're struggling with anxiety on this morning, reading the text says that there is a prescription and a praise. I want to tell you something. 
Yeah. I need you to say, oh, what do you But what he says, stand still. Right? That is a militaristic term that refers to disarming yourself. Yeah. In other words, stay out of my way. Yeah. And put your gun down. Yeah. I don't even want you to think about getting involved. Yeah. You know, that's somebody getting away and they don't ask you to just come in. You know, and you know what? Why are you talking to me about, you know, my little one's coming to West Virginia, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, my wife be cooking and I'll come in and I'll give you little pots or something and then she'll let me know. Get out of the pots. Right? I might come in and, you know, she, listen, if, if my wife never go to prison, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you context. If you never go to prison, she ain't killed nobody. She ain't stole nothing. Uh, 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 ain't no fraud. Right. If you go to prison, it's because somebody would let her put some lorries in that food. <laughs> you know how people say sunflowers seem they I mean she just keep lorries on that. You know. So from in there, that's the possible come right back. Get out of this come right back. <laughs> I might go in and grab a little, little, little pepper or something. Get it down! We got lobbies. <laughs> so I don't like to not take two of you, You don't, Jill, you don't need no hot sauce, no ranch, no ketchup, no bun, no bread. Lobbies! <laughs> he said it to them. Not only do I need you to be further where you stand, but I need you to remove the thought yeah. of trying to intervene. Yeah. That's a hard part, yeah. Yeah. Standing ain't always hard. Sometimes standing still yeah. is hard because our eyes are deceiving us. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I can watch God walk into my life and it don't look like it's going to turn out the way it's supposed to turn out. Yeah. And so my natural inclination is going to go hell. Yeah. 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 As if a God who raised himself, his own son from the grave, need my help. Right. Come on. Right. He said, stand still. Right. right, bill number one. Bill number two. Yeah. And seek the salvation. Yeah. Oh. I don't know when it's out. Yeah. He says, uh, second bill is, I need you to seek the salvation yeah. of the Lord. That word is the deliverance yeah. of the Lord. Okay, so, so, so what you need to understand, contextually speaking, here yeah. is, is that this was a group of people who ain't never had nothing to go right for. Uh, they watched and heard about it. Everybody else be blessed. Yeah. He's saying, stand still yeah. and watch the same God yeah. Yeah. who kept the folk through the plagues. Ah, yeah. yeah. uh, watch the same God yeah. who created the heavens and the earth do something for you. Yeah. Watch the same God yeah. and when He decided He was going to win us. You know, some folks told him, just take a little bit of blood and put it over on the post, and I'll pass over your house and spare. Yo, watch Him do something for you. Now. That he was instructing you to say, okay, you watch everybody else be blessed. He says, but now stand still and watch God work on your behalf. Yeah, yes, oh. yes, yes. Oh. Thank you. Good. Sometimes when you see him working, don't look good. Yeah. Don't, it, just, it just don't, you know. Yeah. You know, we like we, we like bosses like Mike Tyson. Yeah. Right? Now, now, First round, turn it off, we pay $257. Yeah. Mike Dunn in a minute. We all sit around the bed and tell them, let's go eat some pizza. That's what we like. Then we complain about it. Right? I done paid all this money. You love that man already. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Right? But let a box get on, you want to go 10 rounds. Thank you, Jesus. 12. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know about him. <laughs> he, right. he, he's just. What if I told you that this text is teaching us that you weren't called to fight this one? Yeah. You were simply called to endure it. Thank you. Thank you. Sit there and watch. Watch God. It works. Then, so he says, he says a, a stay still. Mm -hmm. right? Second bill. See the salvation of the Lord. Call me in the morning. He said, because these Egyptians, which you see yeah. right now, they will be here tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. He is intentional 
and calling out the Egyptians. He doesn't say that the Red Sea that you're facing will be gone tomorrow. But the Egyptians that you y'all see that? That you're facing. Y'all see that? The Egyptians whom you see today. You shall see them no more forever. Right? How can I say forever, ever? About the Egyptians. Right. Mm-hmm. Because anxiety says, yeah. we struggled it over what we got past. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, he's telling them that, I want you to see this. Yeah. That a group of people that are behind them, yeah. you'll never see them again. Yeah. Come on, now, come on. A group of people uh-huh. who are in the rearview mirror already. Uh-huh. Yeah. You'll never have to deal with them again. Right. Right. I still not see them. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the very people mm-hmm. that you're running from, yeah. All right. who you're already ahead of, yeah. no. that you've already escaped, right. you won't have to deal with them. Yeah. That's okay. Understand that most of the stuff that we're worried about, you already given to God, and He's already. I want you to think about the stuff that you worry about that God is already here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He said to me, He promised to look at it. I promise to work on it. Salvation. 
of the Lord, the Egyptians. Now you won't see them. No more for heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but he tells them two things. The Lord will fight for you. Yeah. Oh, hello, uh, the Lord will fight for you. What I need for you to do is hold your hands. The Lord will fight for you. But what I need for you to do is to hold your peace. salvation of the Lord. Yeah. You understand that my praise is in the Egyptians being gone forever. Yeah. You understand that the Lord is going to fight for me. Yeah. That I've got to know when to hold my peace. Yeah. Um, he, he says to them, the Lord will fight for you. It was all me. Yeah. 
be in me? Because I'm God and you're not. I want you to hold your peace because I don't know if it's real. Remember those two verses ago, you were complaining. Thank you. 